Well, customers really are only interested in four things. One, they want to know, okay, so if I use your product or service, how's that going to support my bottom line? How's that going to help me to improve my profitability? Secondly, they're going to say, well, okay, so how's it going to help me reduce costs? Thirdly, they say, okay, great. So tell me how this is going to make my team and all my organization more efficient. And lastly, how's this going to help me sleep at night? How's this going to help me to solve any challenges, any issues, or any problems that I have? And you, when you are explaining how your value proposition is aligned with those four specific needs, you need to know which specific issues are of a concern to your customer. You're not going to find that out while you spraying, while you vomiting features. You're only going to find that out when you start asking meaningful questions. What kind of questions? Well, obviously, open-ended questions, right? But we'll get to that in a moment. This is what I want you to believe is, I want you to understand that we do have a combination lock for sales success, right? And that combination lock is called asking effective, meaningful questions. You see, what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to learn the art of speaking way less and listening way, way more. Because the quality of your questions determines the quality of your sales. You see, the more you can uncover exactly what your customer is looking for, the easier it's going to be for you to provide the perfect solution for them. And here's our biggest challenge, right? Your prospects should speak 80% of the time. But unfortunately, research shows that salespeople speak over 81% of the time in sales engagements. And the customer or the prospect only gets to speak about 20% of the time. Now, realistically, if you're speaking 80% of the time, you can't be unlocking exactly how your value proposition is aligned with what that customer or prospect needs. So challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to ask way more engaging questions. Challenge yourself to be open to listening rather than telling. And unfortunately, guys, research shows that we love to speak about ourselves. And so we real world stand say, oh, that's not true. I don't love speaking about myself. Well, science shows something quite different. They actually did some research where they offered to pay people money to describe how certain famous people would respond or react to certain stimuli. Or they could say how they themselves would respond. The difference was, if they spoke about the famous person, they would be paid some money. And if they spoke about themselves, they wouldn't be paid anything. The crazy part, it, it just seems counterintuitive. But most people chose to rather speak about themselves for free than they chose to speak about the famous people. And that's the reality, is we actually get some kind of chemical stimulation. We get some kind of hormonal reward when we speak about ourselves. And so we love speaking about ourselves. And there's our challenge in sales meetings is what we end up doing is we unconsciously speak about ourselves. We unconsciously, goodness, heaven forbid a customer should ask a question, right? We go off in a single phase tirade about how wonderful our product is. And 20 minutes later, we sort, sort of stop and come back to our senses and go, um, are you still with me, right? Well, there's the big challenge, is we need to learn the art of no longer speaking, right? Of rather listening. We want to take active steps to speak less. So how would you say we, we start that off, right? Because remember, we need to be listening way more and speaking way less. Well, obviously, if you want to encourage engagement, you want to encourage your customers to tell you what they need, you've got to be doing something, right? And that's asking questions, but it's meaningful questions, right?